there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Saturday, April the 29th, 2023, and this is video number 185. How are you all doing? I hope you're well and staying safe. I have a jam-packed episode of things that I've made, things that I'm working on, updates on certain projects that you may have seen or may not have seen. I can't quite remember. I think these are brand new ones. And also Happy Mail. I've got uh, some updates on the Festive Dragon Chevron wrap that I created, uh, I think in January, I released the recipe of how to do it. And I have some updates and I want to flag some uh, love that I got from that pattern in highlighting a featured uh, crocheter. And uh, I have permission to share some of the photographs that she had sent along with me. So I want to say thank you ahead of the game. Um, I also generally in these update videos that I throw in, I talk about what me and my husband Chad have been up to here in the community that we live in and what are, what we've been watching on TV. So I'll put all that stuff to the, towards the end of the video and all the Arnie goodies up front. So if you want to stick around for the whole thing, you're more than welcome to, but I understand we're all super busy and may not get a chance to, you know, indulge in a full video. So, um, yeah, with that, I think I've put, I've captured everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Let's get cracking and talk about finished objects, shall we? So here, this was actually on my man, man form, Hank, which generally he stands over there, but he's got something on him that I want to talk about a little later. So uh, here we go. What do you think? You saw this possibly halfway done. I think I was... Um, up to the first uh, color section here and now it's completed and I absolutely love it. Yeah, I added a bit of tassel to it. So I put, polled a vote on my Instagram and I had the tassels made up but not attached and I'm like, tassel it or not tassel it? That's the question. So the tassels won and they got on. So thank you for helping me make that decision. I absolutely love this pattern. Now it's a crochet pattern by a designer called Claudia Ramprich. And uh, here it is here. It's a paid for pattern. I'll link all patterns, all YouTube channels that I mentioned down below in the description box. So if you're looking for more information, then please go there to find it out. And this is the pattern here. It's called, I'm probably going to mispronounce it. It's uh, re, ro, ti, ro, tia? the Rotia Triangle Shawl. And unfortunately, the pit photograph on the front is a, a dark purple that the pattern goes into. And you don't get to see the lusciousness of the stitch work. But in person, when I'm looking at the printout, I do see them. So I do see all the intricacies. So this is how it looks in a different, obviously different colorway. There's no purple in this one, but I've got a nice grade, uh, gradation gray, which starts off as a middle gray and then works its way down into more of a, I'm going to say not quite a charcoal gray, but somewhere just above um, a charcoal gray there. And I've intermingled two Hanks. One is a uh, chestnut colorway, and the other one is a burgundy, like a burgundy red, almost like a wine, a wine color here. So three yarns were used in this. They're all fingering weight. And I'll show you because I can't get it all into the frame here. I've taken some photographs of it so you can see the wonderful stitch work and I have a background here which is quite loud and confusing. So I will insert those photos here of the make and I'll come back and talk to you about the yarn that I used and the hook.
Okay, what did you think? I really enjoyed seeing all the stitch work on just a plain background and also how it drapes over my man form, Hank. Uh, he's wonderful because I throw everything on him that I'm testing out, whether I'm sizing a, a sweater or want to see how a fabric drapes when I've made it up. Uh, so I really enjoy having a form to fit that on. So I hope you enjoyed the photographs. Let's uh, look at the yarn that I used for it. So the gray, the gray color that is uh, gradient from light gray to the dark gray is from Hobie. Now this was a gifted yarn that I was reviewing and I had leftovers. I initially used it in a knit pattern and I had a whole chunk left over. So I thought I'm gonna use this Dolce Cashmere from Hobie and add it into the pattern. So I started it off, it starts off at the top of the, uh, the shawl and it works its way out. And when I got to a certain point in the pattern where I knew that there was going to be a different stitch, uh, where there will be bubbles, I thought this would be a great uh, opportunity to throw in some color. And the second one that I used was a chestnut color brown. I don't have the label anymore, but it's from uh, the Authentic Hand Dyed at Hobby Lobby. It's the fingering weight tonal and it's called Chestnut, the colorway. I absolutely love that. So I decided to add it in here where there was gonna be some lace work and some bubble stitches. And then once I had done a band and wanted to move back into the gray, I liked this section here where there's an overlap in the design of the stitch work. And I thought that would be a nice way of introducing back the gray color work. So, went back into the gray for a little bit until I finished it all. And then I went into the, it's a Hawthorne fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks. And the colorway is called Hood River. I'm just gonna check, River Hood, sorry. Hood River or River Hood. My notes say here River Hood. And I absolutely loved that deep rich color. And that's how I finished it off. I had a little bit of the chestnut uh, left just enough to do these bubble stitches because I really liked and enjoyed the bubble stitches here. So I wanted to repeat that in the pattern and unify the, the whole color work and texture of the, of the piece. So the uh, last thing that I did was the tassels. I cut a bit of everything that I've mentioned into uh, st strings. I wrapped around a book and then uh, uh, snipped one end and tied the other end to make these tassels and then just bound the tassel a few maybe an inch down from the the join here and I used one extra yarn which I wanted to try out and it was this one here I absolutely love this yarn it's not soft at all it's very wiry and to wind this ball up it was wanting to spring out and unravel. So it is a very acquired, and I'm going to say it's almost a novelty yarn. And it's from Barocco. It's the yarn called Liana. And the colorway in this one is called, I think it's just a number, 8274. So it has a bit of everything in this shawl like there is a little bit of uh, red in there there's also some gray and the addition as well of other colors so i thought that would be a nice way of tying up that tassel and using those silky kind of wiry type strands within the tassel as well so yeah i absolutely love making it it's very very soft the yarn did not split. It was great for uh, all the different aspects of this pattern. Bubble stitches worked well. It was easy to frog back when I made a mistake and needed to go back a line or two or a row of two. And I used a 3.5 millimeter metal crochet hook, which is kind of like my favorite size of hook now to work with, especially when I'm working with DK or less. I'm a very loose crocheter. So um, people who have 
tighter tension stitches may opt to go up a size in needle uh, in hook size but um yeah i really enjoy it enjoyed this and i did block it and i did pull out the pico stitches in the block when i stretched it out the size grew considerably uh, to open up all of the lace work and the stitches this probably grew somewhere to the vicinity of an extra I'm going to say 12 inches in um, in width and also maybe maybe six to eight inches in depth so quite a big stretch there if I put my wingspan out it's probably my height and then a little bit on each side left over so I'm five foot eight and it looks to be another maybe six inches on either side so maybe it's a six foot six foot or so uh, shawl in length and the depth of it here from the tip of the point is probably another mm, I'm gonna say three feet two and a half to three feet so I like that, that scale of a triangle uh, shawl where it can be worn more of a, of a wrap style. So you have longer wingspan than the depth and really love it. The next project that I finished was one that has been with me for the last three and a half months, maybe. It came off my hook about two weeks ago. I did start it in January of 2023. And you've been there along the way with me as well. So you may have seen or recalled the series of videos that I've posted along the way of the catch up and the updates on this project, but it is now completed. And I enjoyed this thoroughly. It was so addictive, I couldn't put it down. And each day I went to work, I would grab a couple of balls of yarn and take them to work with me at lunchtime I would make a couple of these duotone granny squares up and when I was finished with it it was almost sad in a way because the project was done but I have ample leftover yarn to create some other items with it. If you're intrigued and want to know what it is it is the postcard from Sweden inspired crocheted blanket. Now originally this blanket was a uh, quilt design. It was designed for a quilt but someone came up with a brilliant idea of making it into a crocheted version and the original quilt designer was Callie Little and later down the way it became a crocheted template and I will link the crocheted template down below in the description box if you're interested in finding out how to do these duotone uh, little granny squares and you put them all together it's very personalized I love that about this pattern is that you can choose all the colors that you love and then rearrange them the process of this uh, blanket was uh, pretty involved in the way that you create small objects and you have to weave in all these ends not my favorite thing to do and you block your uh, little squares out and then you have the fun with laying out all the colors and rearranging them to you're happy with some type of landscape of color so here it is here i won't be able to show you all of it in camera but let's see what's the best way because it's landscape the viewfinder i will hold it this way and move back a little bit <laughs> holy smokes look at that all oh, that color wow that is amazing so i cannot show you all of this wonderful blanket here in this little viewfinder so i've taken some photographs again uh just to see how it fits inside of a room or you know hangs off a chair you want accent some way in your decor and here they are here i'll be back to talk to you about the yarn that i used as well as the hook size Okay, so what did you think of those photos? I'm just going to be like, put it over my shoulder as we talk about it. Because it, 
<laughs> I love this. It's so, it makes me so happy to look at all these wonderful colours. Uh, so the yarn that I used was a review yarn that Hobby sent me. Now Hobby is a yarn store that sells yarn and other things like uh, accessories and notions, they have patterns. It's just a crafter's delight for if you are a crochet or a knitter and a weaver or any of the yarn crafts. I have uh, been connected with their review and their campaigns for maybe a, about a year now, a year and a half. And when uh, I was given a list of things to try out for one of their campaigns, I jumped at this woody tweed yarn. I really wanted to try something that was recycled and that had the nice quality of different nub colors throughout the, the yarn itself. And this yarn was really nice to work with. It is a bit rustic and not the softest. I'm gonna give it maybe a three out of five for softness on the soft scale. Uh, but it did frog really nicely. There was a little breakage because of the fact that the twist is uh, not consistent. And I reviewed the yarn in January of 2023. So rather than going through each of the colors and how I put them all together and all that sort of thing and what the colorways were called, I'm gonna link down below the uh, in the description box where I reviewed the colors that were sent to me. Now. My contact at Hobby was so kind to send me the full palette of 16 colors that they have to date in the Woody Tweed. And uh, I only used 11 in the blanket, but I have ample enough left over to create other things. So I'll show you the process as well as what the label looks like. So here is the labels here, and they come in a donut shape. It's Woody Tweed, it's a DK weight yarn. And again, I use my 3.5 millimeter crochet hook because I'm such a loose knit, uh, crocheter. So yeah, I, I used the 11 colors. I have some left over, some I completed, like this mustardy yellow color is all gone. And then there's uh, a pink variety. I think it's a lighter pink that all went. And I almost got through the navy blue as well. So I'm gonna say about four of them I finished up, exhausted the colorway, and then I have maybe the seven little bundles left. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with the process and how wonderful it was to work on small squares like this. So there's a square that hasn't been blocked and that the ends haven't been woven in yet. And I, would take a couple of balls with me to work. And at lunchtime, I would maybe knock out two of these. And then in the evening, I would also uh, create more while I was watching TV. So you don't really need to, you know, concentrate on each part of the rows. You could sort of whiz through wherever it's re repetitious and just glance down when you're around corners or if you're, you know, starting the starting, you need to be a little bit more focused, but yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So there's a there's a chunk there. And then what I did was I would weave in the ends and then block them. So these are the ones that I had extra and I'm going to be making a cowl out of all of these. So a really nice long super sized scarf where I can join the ends and make a super sized cowl and then have it wrap around a few times. I think that would be <laughs> very much a statement piece. And I'll just give you a glance at what's left over from the 11 balls that I'm going to be adding into the cowl. So just to finish it up and that's it there. So not that much in there. I'm going to say it's probably 200 grams, not even of yarn. And then these as well would probably make it to around 250 to 300 grams of, of product that will go into my super scarf or super cow. So I really enjoyed this project. This is one that I th think is going to be sticking around for a long time. The other thing that I wanted to mention was joining. 
I chose to hand stitch in a whip stitch all the all the uh, bits together and it's not as obtrusive as a single crochet. I, I thought that these triangle shaped duotone squares needed to be butted up together without any uh, interruption with a ridge on either side. And the yarn that I used to stitch it all together, yarn from Ice, here it is here. This is what I used for the joining. It is a fingering weight tweed yarn that has, it's acrylic and wool. So it is a little, uh, a little tough, so you don't have it breaking. And I think that will uh, be nice. I do have the instructions here for the majority, actually all of the yarn is the same. So it does says, say that I can machine wash this and then I probably lay it flat to dry. So this also is machine washable as well. And I like the neutral color, so it plays nicely with all of the bright colors and it doesn't stand out too much. It's quite subtle and unobtrusive. And I really love it. I love it, love it, love it. Oh, it smells like my lavender wool wash. <laughs> and the fact that it is recycled yarn, I'm really happy with, with that uh, being 100% recycled wool. The next project that I want to feature is one that was housed in this wonderful project bag that was made by a YouTuber who used to have a channel and put content, and that was Kit. Now, Kit's uh, past YouTube channel was called All Things Crochet and Knit with Kit, and I love this drawstring project bag. Thank you so much, Kit. I love it, love it so much. So it came with me on my vacation that I took to Illinois and I was working on this project in the airplane as well as in the waiting area when I was connecting flights at different airports. So I have some clips of that kind of like being worked up and I absolutely enjoy how this pattern worked out. Now there is a little bit of a uh, I'm going to say tips that I can give you if you're wanting to try this pattern out. It is a paid for pattern and here it is here. It's a wonderful shawl which is not quite my height. Mm, I'm going to say yes, just five foot eight in length and then maybe uh, 20 inches in, in, the, um, in the thickness of it. It's a circular scarf so it has a, a semicircle I should say it has a flat uh, top and then it it sort of has this arc shape I really like that for for the design of wearing it as well so the pattern is called the lightweight hipster and it's by I'm going to mispronounce her name I think Yohi Locatelli Yohi Locatelli and ah oh, just an amazing, uh, amazing light and airy scarf for warmer climates. If you're um, coming in out of a, like out of the spring into a summer, you could still wear this depending on what kind of like material you use, but there's enough openings for airflow and you could wear this with a light t-shirt or uh, if you have a jacket, I think that will work nice as a textural piece. Now, the uh, the thing after I finished knitting on this, it did have a very interesting, weird, I'm going to say an elongated starting point because you start here on a tab. What is it called? Garter tab. And that's where you cast your stitches from. And I found that this little pocket here was, and you can see it's sort of wanting to do that now, was kind of like arching upwards and creating this interesting bow-like uh, bulge. But it did block out straight. And I don't know whether that was from my tension of the stitches. Uh, my Maybe my garter tab to begin with was uh, 
uh, not tight enough. Uh, perhaps maybe dropping down a needle size to avoid that weird puckering. Or you could do what I just did, aggressively block it, and then it went straight. <laughs> so there's something to be said about blocking your work at the end so that you can really get to see the style and the shape and open up all these, uh, I don't know whether this is called lace work, but it's drop stitches. And, and I think with blocking, you get the full extent of that drop stitch stretching and going in the direction that should go, which is kind of like gravity pulls down. So there's no kinkering or what is it? Wrinkling of your fabric. So absolutely love the pattern. The tip that I want to give you is when I was using the pattern, I did use the uh, needle sizes that they suggest, and it is a 4.5 millimeter set of knitting needles. I did use wooden knitting needles because I was on the plane. I was worried that they would confiscate the metal ones. And in so doing that, they weren't of high quality, but they were um, they were nice enough to, to hold the stitches on so they wouldn't slide off too because of the rummaging around in the bag and stuff. So I thought that the wooden needle would be good. I'm a loose knitter and crocheter. So I thought maybe these wraps that they ask you to do for the drop stitches would just glide nicely across the needles. But I had done one of Yoki Locatelli's designs before where I had to wrap the the stitch, the yarn around the needles for yarn overs. And I actually had to cut the first attempt of the the design that I was working on at the time. I think the one the one that I tried was called the Storm Scarf. And there's a little note in the pattern that says to do the wraps very loosely. And I thought that my attention was loose enough, but <laughs> it wasn't for that, for that particular pattern. So I recalled that lesson when I was working on this one to wrap very loosely. And what I found was I was still having to watch my uh, stitches uh, where I was drawing them closer to the tips of the needles. I needed to make sure that all of those wraps and all of those stitches were kind of like together and then go across the the needle itself. And that's how I kind of like convey about all of those wraps and, and stitches to the working side of the, the needle. If I was to pull it apart and try and get them one over at a time, it wasn't going to work. So Loosely wrap your uh, yarn overs is one tip and also move your wraps as well as your stitches together closely when you're working towards the, the tip of the needle. That way you'll find that they're not um, kind of strangling the needle if they're too far apart. They're as a collective, they kind of move better together. Uh, so. <laughs> Those are my tips. Now, the yarn that I used was a delightful yarn I had purchased and had in my stash for this pattern over a year and a half now. So I got to use it. I'm super happy that I did. It is called Lana Grossa and the collection is called Gimetolo Geo 250. That's the label there. Gimetolo Geo 250. And the color that I've used is 902, goes through a dark blue, light blue, and a gray. And it is a single ply yarn. I think it roves a little bit, but it mostly sits on a sport weight uh, style kind of weighted yarn or uh, a number, is that number two weight yarn? It has a little bit of a sheen to it. There is some halo. And this yarn is, what are you? It says here Merino. Are you 100% Merino? Oh, it's 45% uh, virgin wool, 30% uh, viscose and 25% polyamide. And I did use a 4.5 millimeter set of knitting needles 
I started with wood and then I went to my chagus when I got home to finish it off. So on the trip, the wood needles were great. And then when I got home, I, I wanted to work a bit quicker. So I got my stainless steel chagus and I, I switched out my, um, like I transferred all the live stitches and I finished it that way. Also the blocking is essential. If I have any photographs of this or a little video of me wearing it, I think I did post something on Instagram, which is quite embarrassing, but I'll include it here now for you. Before I forget to mention as well with this wonderful scarf is that I did a modification to it and you may have recognized it if you've made this scarf before that uh, it doesn't come with this Pico style edging but I wanted to finish it off with a different edging and I had recently done another shawl which is called the Moon Cat Shawl by Kali McClure and I love the diamond shape that was charted in that pattern. So what I did was I um, added it in from the last bit of the pattern directions in the hipster light shawl. And I added in the edging from the moon cut shawl. Loved it. I still, I still think that was a good decision because when you wear it, it gives, creates a little bit of eyelets as well as these uh, triangular shapes and it pushes out points to give it a bit of a jagged edge. So that was the modification that I did for this pattern. The next thing that I want to catch you up on is my whips. Now I've taken a look around and I haven't shown these before so these are brand new whips and I absolutely love this next crocheted pattern. It's a free one and it works really well with how I am enjoying my crochet right now. So I'll grab a ball of yarn and I will throw it into my work bag and it, on my lunch break, I feel accomplished by crocheting up one of the squares in this pattern. And this pattern has six lovely squares that later down the way uses, I believe it is a single crochet to join all the squares together. So it will end up as this blanket. Now it's a free pattern. I'll link it down below. It's called Nature's Walk and it's by Sandra Paul. I guess it was used for a make along because it has like the hashtag for a cow and then it's got here crochet make along. I'm just showing you the, the cover here of the design and I've chosen my colors. They do have great suggestions in the pattern itself for colors that you can choose if you have difficulty making up your mind on what goes where. And they have six unique tiles or squares and they're all to do with the theme of a garden or walking through a pathway on nature. So you'll see uh, things like a flower or, ro or a bud. There's hearts. I don't know what you see when you're in nature, but I guess your heart kind of like, you know, uh, pulsates a little bit when you see the beauty of nature. Uh, there's also the North Star. There is, I'm just looking down here at what I've got, berries. So they're all like motifs that r relate to this wonderful walk that you're on. And I like the story of it. So uh, yeah, there is probably around 28 pages in this. So if you are going to print it out, make sure that you have enough paper in your printer. <laughs> you can also do front and back. And I like the pattern, the way that it's treated because it shows you what uh, the pattern is in written form. So you can read it if you choose, if you prefer to read your patterns or a chart form. So visually you can uh, use a legend which tells you what the symbols all mean. And that's the way that I generally like working with it because I find when you're got a US or a, a US or a UK version of writing, you have to do the mental note of 
reminding yourself what each of the stitches are uh, and then recall whether it's a US or UK terminology. I think with the with the symbols for me, it makes it more unified and I know exactly when I see the symbol, what that means at an instant. The thing where I find it confusing for patterns, where I will go to the writing, sorry, the, the charts, when I'll go to the writing to uh, clarify something, is when those symbols are too close together and you don't get to see what comes first exactly, or is that on that row? And do I do the, like the single crochet before I do a chain? So I think with process, when they get too close together, I need the pattern written out so that I can verify. So it has both, which is wonderful. And it has technique photographs as well on how to do a certain stitch, especially if that stitch can be done several ways. Now, this pattern is both in UK and in US terminology, so that's helpful as well. I've accidentally printed out the US terminology, uh, the UK terminology one, <laughs> but I didn't want to go back and then reprint, so I am using the charts and having a mental note that I've got the UK terminology one. So yeah, um, again, I'm loving that I can personalize this with the types of colors that I want to put into my own blanket. I chose this particular pattern because it uses DK Weight Yarn and I am making a series of videos. I already posted one about four videos ago on DK Weight Yarn that I purchased from Wool Warehouse. Now, I'm compiling something together which reflects and looks at the economic DK weight yarn uh, in the acrylic as the fiber. And I've covered three already of the collections that I've purchased from Wool Warehouse, which is situated in the UK. And I can extend on that now because I have purchased one from Hirschner's and I've got a couple of different varieties as well, which will be an up and coming video. But let's talk about the collections that I have worked with and I can also link the videos down below. Once I get that Hirschner's one uh, filmed, I will also include that in the description box as well as a link so that you can see what I come up with as my ideas and recommendations and my review on the yarn. So the first one here from the Wool Warehouse is uh, three... I have four, four different uh, panels that I've created in four of the colorways using the DK weight yarn that I purchased from Wool Warehouse. So here's the first one and I've done my eight and it's the, the flower motif in the pattern and nature's walk. And this color here is from the James Seabrett top value, double knit, and it's in the colorway salmon. I got from a 100 gram ball, I got my full eight. Actually, I got nine, almost nine, but I got eight here for the pattern out of one ball. So that was helpful. And I did use my 3.5 millimeter crochet hook again. Uh, I don't know what the size of the pattern tells me, but I like the density of of the 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm yet to block these out to a certain specific size that it says in the pattern, but, and weaving my end. So that's number one. I liked the yarn. It did a good job and it frogged very nicely as well. And I do like it because some of the colors in this collection from Top Value have a heathered quality to them. Not all of them. So when you're looking online and shopping for a yarn, be weary that some of the top value have the heathered quality and some of them are more saturated and they have just a full saturation color. So here it is again. Has a little bit of that heatheredness to it, which I really like. The next yarn that I used was to the square called gate, the gate, and I've got my eight in that one as well. 
Now this one, I didn't get as much because um, the, the salmon colour, I actually got almost nine tiles done. And this one, I only could get eight done, but I had a little bit left over. And it's in the colourway called Parchment. And this one was the... Oh, I don't think I have the label. It is the Yarnsmith Create Double Knit Variety Yarn in the colourway Parchment. Funny enough, the top value James C. Brett also has a, um, a colourway called Parchment as well. So I think that they both are interchangeable. The James C. Brett top value has slightly more colour selections in their DK collection and then the uh, Yarnsmith Create collection does. But they're all 100 gram uh, balls of yarn and they all have the same amount of yardage in the balls as uh, those two collections. So let me tell you how many yards you get. You get 290 meters or 317 yards. The next one that I have here is also another top value double knitting from James C. Brett. And I just started this one. It's in light, the colorway light lavender. And this is my North Star. There we go. And I've just done two of them. I've weighed these as well. And I think I'm gonna get my full eight out of one ball as well. So that's kind of handy. Okay, the next couple of squares that I've got to show are from the Hirschner's order that I made. And it will be a featured video later down the way. And as soon as I do that video in the description box, I'll link uh, the, the video down below for what I have to say about the full collection. But what I have purchased from the DK Weight Value Yarns have been the Premier basic DK and I have made the square motif called I think it's called buds I think it's called buds and they're kind of bubble stitches and I got six squares because I used a little bit more yarn for these bubble stitches I got six in the 100 gram ball and this colorway is called Coral. I really like this colorway. And they are saying here that I'm getting 280 meters or 306 yards. So not quite as many meters and yards from this variety of yarn compared to the James Seabread, which is the top value or the Craftsmiths Create, they have a little bit more um, in length of yarn. And that's probably why I only got six as well. So I thought to myself, what am I going to do as a, another colour to make up the eight? Because I need eight tiles in each of these motifs. So what I did was I got myself a ball of the Hobby yarn, which they had gifted me, and I had ample enough yarn left over in the woody tweed and I created these ones. Now these are 100% recycled uh, wool so they're not acrylic but they are a three weight and I like I like how it turned out so I'm going to be adding this into the blanket as well and I was thinking in this colorway which is only a number I think it's number one it's the white color and I'm going to do devote a few of each of these motif tiles and do them in this white so I think sporadically across in to mingle with the other tiles one white in this tweedy effect in each of the palette in each of the swatches would be a nice way of unifying the blanket as well so those are my buds and this is how much I had left of the of the coral colour. The other one that I did that I was super happy with. Now this isn't an economic DK weight. It is a little bit more pricier. So 
I would say in the next level up. And it's not full acrylic, it is a cotton acrylic blend, is this one here. And I really like the color. It goes well with the blanket. And this motif is called Berries. And it is the Willow Yarns Rise. Now, I believe this was on sale when I purchased it. And it was somewhere between the $3, $4 mark. So the, and that's US currency. So when you transfer that into Canadian currency, it's probably around close to five to $6. And yeah, the color is called Rouge and it has a nice variegation that I love in for the berries. So I'm gonna add that into the blanket as well. So I need to do, get six out of this, and it, uh, sorry, eight uh, berry tiles. And if I can't, I have a backup of this color here, which is one that I think plays nicely into the color palette of the berries. Now to talk about the pattern, I have been told by the commenters that there is bonus squares and I went looking and purchased them today. So there are six bonus squares to add into the blanket if you wanna make the blanket bigger or have more difference within the, the stitch work. And I am so happy there are six bonus ones. And I really love the wheat, uh, the wheat one and the, the starburst along with the snowflake. And I'm gonna put those three in this blanket as well. I'm not sure how I'm gonna fit them in or if I'm going to uh, create a different size because I might have extra uh, uh, squares to go through that my dimensions of my blanket might be a little different from the pattern. But again, that's nature's walk. Super happy with it. And it's good for if you're on the go and only can pack a small project, uh, like if you're going to work. So I like this idea for the way I'm working right now with my projects. Now, the next work in progress is one that has returned back to my home, apparently. It went on a vacation somewhere, out of mind, out of sight kind of destination, I guess. Have you had that happen to you as well? You start on a project, put it away, and then are looking around for it, maybe even forget about it entirely like I did. And then lo and behold, a month and a half later, you're like, oh, you've come back. This was a project that was sitting right beside where I sit normally at night when we watch movies, but it was in a, a carry case. Like a, I have a project bag for larger items that I can carry away with me. And it was sitting in there with the, with the lid closed on it. So yeah, in my mind, it wasn't there. It went away. So I was looking through that case and here it was a month and a half later. And I have it in this project bag here called Yarned and Dangerous. Absolutely love this bag. It was gifted to me by a YouTuber here and her name is Pamela. Hi, Pamela. And she has a YouTube channel as well. I'll link down below. And that is Pamela's uh, Crochet and Knit Corner. So this project was one that I had in my sketchbook. It's what I'm calling the hooded sweater vest. And I'm using a Celtic inspired cable along with other cables. I'm just trying to get you how it looks when it's flat because it's got both sides uh, with the Celtic braid. And then I've got some, I think this, they call this the honeycomb cable. I'm not sure. And then I'm adding in some uh, elongated uh, seed stitch in between, as well as a new stitch to me, which I think I'm doing wrong, but <laughs> I don't even know what it's called, honeybee cone or something. So uh, yeah, this is what it's looking like so far. I absolutely love it. It's very wooly and I love the yarn, but what I'm following for the, for the, motif that runs up the center in the front 
and also the center in the back there, it's reversible, is from this free uh, instructional pattern. And it's a 16 row repeat using all those different terms there, <laughs> which I am fumbling my way through. And the nice th thing about this yarn is that when I make a mistake, I need to pull out where I'm overlapping incorrectly or have maybe made a, a pearl when there would, should have been a, a knit stitch. Um, this yarn is so like sticky on itself that all those, uh, it doesn't, it unravels fine, but when um, you're talking about live stitches without the needle um, going through it, a lot of the times when you're doing cables, those uh, loose, stitches will start slipping out. This one holds up nice and perky. So <laughs> I really like that. I can actually get away with, you know, making a few errors and then put, ripping out without having to uh, call up the drop stitches as well or pull up the drop stitches. So they just sit up there nice and perky and I like that. So there it is there. Love the color as well. And the yarn that I'm using is the Croft Wild Shetland yarn, and it's 100% Shetland Island wool, and it's from Yorkshire Spinners, or West Yorkshire Spinners, sorry. And this is an Aran Roving style yarn. It has um, a nice fuzzy quality to it, very rustic, I like that. It's not super, super soft, but I like the thermal qualities of this yarn. Even when it's wet, it's going to keep your body warm and regulate your heat. Uh, so let's take a look at the yarn. It is 100% Shetland Islands wool. That's what the yarn is. And it's made in Yorkshire in England. So I love it. The colour is called Rolling Hills. If you need the number, it's 793. And it works up wonderful. So I'm getting that there's going to be some undulation there of uh, darker stripes and then going into lighter stripes, going into darker stripes, but they're not kind of severe stripes. They're blending very nicely. And I'm, I'm up to a section where it looks like it's going to go back into this darker green, hence the rolling hills, right? It's kind of like boop, boop, boop. And I am using my very, very nice gift here from Penny Bolton. I love this. It's like a ball cozy and it does hold my, my cake that I caked up nice and, and sturdy. And I'm using this as my cable needle. I know they come in various sizes. This is just a plastic one. And my needle tips are, I believe, I think there are five, a five millimeter set of uh, stainless steel chagu. And I have it on a, uh, maybe it's a 36, 36 inch cable. And with cables, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be blocking severely. And I want all of those cables to be kind of stretched out so they're not bunching up. And you can see all of the work a bit nicer than I don't know what that color is. It's coming from somewhere else. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Awesome. And the yarn was gifted to me by Crystal over at Bagger Day. And this was one of the yarns that was speaking to me. I think that's part of my nature's walk coming into the, the mix there. And I love this yarn so much. And I love my bag and I love my yarn cozy. Okay, that catches you up with everything that I wanted to talk about with whips that you haven't seen before and my and my finish items. Let's keep this train moving. And next I'm going to be talking about some love that I received in an email about a pattern that was, that was crocheted and some lovely photos of the festive dragon wrap that Barbara sent me. So hi, Barbara. Thank you so much for sending the photos. And I did get 
permission from Barbara to share these photos of the festive dragon wrap and some other elements about the piece. I will link down below in the description box on what kind of yarn that Barbara used as well as this wonderful beautiful pendant which I hope comes out in the photos that I'm going to montage here and yeah who the creator of that wonderful brooch was. So um, I'll link it down below in the description box. The photos I'll cut into here now and then I'll come back and talk to you about the festive dragon recipe. I call it the recipe. So wonderful, wonderful work. Thank you so much, Barbara, for sending that in. And I'm happy that you enjoyed the, the recipe and creating that piece and, and so many wonderful yarns that you can bind together. I absolutely love it. Now, there is a little bit of an update to the Festive Dragon Wrap. I think in the first four days that I released it and then put it out there for the world as a free kind of recipe so that people could try the crochet stitches. Then um, I got some feedback, which was awesome to make some changes because there was something in the, I guess the uh, first part of the uh, work was written up a little incorrect and it was giving too many clusters in the work. So I had to jump in there and make some alterations. So if you happen to have gotten the draft that was initially uploaded, that was draft number four, I'm going to have to say that is now redundant and there is a mistake in there. So I do apologize. Uh, I will link the same link down below to the pattern that where that's where it resides in my Dropbox and you'll receive a PDF that pops up. And you can choose to either print it out from there, download it, or just use it in your browser window as you would uh, to get the instructions. Uh, it is draft number five. So if you go up to the top of the, the draft on page one and you see draft five, then you're on the correct one. So there's just an update there on the, the instructions on what I use for the recipe to create the festive dragon wrap. So I know a few of you have also done them and I've eyeballed them on Instagram. I want to say a huge thank you for doing that because I can see how it looks in multiple colors and, you know, your choices of yarn. So it's very personalized and I love all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just a special thank you to Jax from Jack's, uh, Jack's Creations. She's also here on YouTube. Uh, for, uh, you know, she's kind of like put a fire under me and said, hey, you got to do something about that pattern, make it, because I kind of stitched it up last year in summer and uh, and she was very encouraging. So I want to say thank you so much, Jax. And I loved your version as well of the Festive Dragon Wrap too. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about some happy mail. And if you're just around to look at what my, what I've made and what I've been working on, then I want to say thank you for joining and uh, coming along for the journey. And you're more than welcome to continue on. Uh, but I will be talking about some Yanni happy mail that I received. When I came home from work one day, maybe about three weeks ago, I saw this wonderful package in a pineapple wrapper. And I was like, oh, I wonder what that is. And I knew straight away it was going to be happy mail. So inside the bag, the pineapple bag, was this palm leaf and fern print. And so it was a bag inside of a bag. So it got even more interesting. But I knew it was coming from my friend Karen. And she had just recently gone traveling to Europe purchased some souvenir yarns and wanted to share some of them with me. So I'm super happy to receive the gift. You know, I never ask for anything. Uh, you know, there's no expectation whatsoever to send me yarn, but I do treasure what you do gift me. And inside the bag was a birthday card from Karen because it was my birthday in 
March and I've been wanting to show this yarn for a while. It's been with me. So we are now in April and I'm getting around to it. So I want to say thank you so much, Karen. The in personalized inscription inside the card, I won't, I, I have read, but I won't read it here and share uh, with you on video, but it did tell me a little bit about where the yarn was purchased and some of the fun things that she was exploring when she went traveling. The first stop was, I believe it might've been her first stop. Karen, you'll have to let me know. But uh, this one came from the UK and it is a yarn that is from Ireland, but I believe the store that Karen was in was in London. And look at that color. Holy smokes, that's me, completely to a T. I love it. And I've never heard of this yarn before. It's called Lit LG. Maybe that's an acronym. Oh, it is a Life in Long Grass. It is fine sock, 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. The colorway is called Burnished. I absolutely love it. It's very, very soft. And what can I tell you about it? It says to hand wash. In this hank, I'm getting, is it 100 grams? Uh, yes, 100 grams, 460 yards or 435 meters. I believe the next stop that Karen went on was in Portugal. And she picked up some souvenir yarns there as well. I have been looking and looking on this particular one to see whether this was manufactured and produced in Portugal, but I can't see where the, where the um, manufactured details are on this label, but it is called Rosarios 4, Rosarios 4, and the color I believe is Murian or color 13. So it is a wheat yellow type tan, and on top of that are speckles in kind of a charcoal-y, almost, I'm going to say, darker brown color. And these will make really, really nice soft mittens, fingerless mittens, or if I pair it with something else, I could do a cowl or an accent piece if I use both these donut shapes together. Let me read you a little bit about the details on this one. It is a considered a fine weight, number one, 50 grams offering up 220 meters. Uh, they are giving some recommended needle size here of a three to three and a half millimeters, but no crochet recommendation, but I would say probably around the same. Oh, it's wonderfully soft. I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five for softness. They are saying here, uh, the symbol has the 30% on the tub 30 degree, sorry, not percent, 30 degree on the tub symbol with a line underneath. So it might be hand wash with that kind of indication and then to lay flat to dry, not, not to tumble dry. It's a hundred percent wool. Ah, oh, so squishy. And definitely you wouldn't need any undergarments to wear this against your skin. It's very, very soft and I love the color. The other thing that I got here. I did take a look at, and it is made in Portugal. The rest of the labeling is in Portuguese, so I can butcher my way through it, or <laughs> I'll let you just take a look at the label. This one is called Aroma, that's the brand name, and it's Trico Brancol. And I think Trico is French, maybe? Could be French for yarn, I'm not sure, <laughs> I guess. And it is, uh, that's the place it's made in Portugal. So if you need to look to see where it, where it uh, came from, that's it there. And I'm guessing just from feeling the fiber with not being able to read the fiber, because I see it's made up of three different ingredients, is that there is probably a, a wool factor. It smells like lemon. Isn't that interesting? And, um... It does look like it has wool in it and something shiny, like I'm going to guess maybe a bamboo or some type of silk. 
So this is the ingredients just there. You see, this is what I have to deal with when I'm reading it. It's quite small. It's wonderfully soft. I'm going to give it a four out of five for softness. And it does have a nice color to it as well. Variegates, not variegates, but it's kind of like a tonal and it has a nice twist to it that really shows up. The knitting needle size here that I can see is a six or seven. And I believe that might be in a US kind of measurement. So six or seven here, or it could be six or seven millimeters because it is a, I would say that's a four weight yarn. There, it's a nice four, but you can be the judge of that. And what is the color? Color seven. And it smells amazing. It smells like lemony. I don't know whether that's kind of a citrus kind of color or something, but it smells delightful. Thank you so much. I can see myself making something like a hat out of this because the uh, measurements of it is, let's take a look. It's 100 grams and it offers up 160 meters. So I think 160 meters might make a nice knitted beanie. And I love the colors for that, for a hat, for sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love, I love them. So I did forget to show one thing that Karen also had in that package. And it's two bars of this chocolate here. It's called Salted Caramel Crisp. And I purposely left it up here in the yarn room because I knew that if it went downstairs, me and Chad would probably snack on it before I could film it. And I want to showcase this as part of the gift as well. Now I can go and snack this weekend with Chad and I can't wait to try it. Thank you so much, Karen. On Thursday, when I returned home from work on the porch was this package here. Uh, I have since opened it up, as you can see, and I've taken out the contents. It was from one of my friends that sent me yarn who would like to remain anonymous. And it comes from a fiber company that this gifter introduced me to a couple of months ago when I received some wonderful yarn from the same company. Now, I think the choices, uh, the choice of colors are so me in that, in that previous gift, as well as this one here. And they also can be intermingled and relate to one another in a project together because they're the same weight size and the colors are kind of a little from the same color family. Uh, the previous one that I got gifted to me was called Mahogany Dreams. And this one that I'm holding is called Back to My Roots. That's the details there. Should you like to do a screen caption? And it's from Arcane Fiber Works from Alberta, Canada. And that's their little logo. With a nice, it's a dragon. I love that logo. It's wonderfully soft. The yarn, this dyer has the ability to capture any photograph and put all those colors and feelings into yarn. And I absolutely cannot say enough about how beautiful the colors are in their collections, but happy, that I got this one. Now, you never need to send me any yarn, but boy, what a beautiful, beautiful gift this is. I'm thinking what I'm planning to do with this one is because it's given me more Celtic vibes, maybe uh, softer, creamier colors, bl color blends. I'm thinking I might like to do uh, some sort of cabling with it, but then also have some nice, uh, continuous texture as well through fabric. So I have some ideas of blending the two together and that will be a great piece to remember the gifter as well. There was a special note as well from the person that corresponded with me who sent this to say that it was a collaborative choice on color 
and uh, from another good friend of ours, and her name is Crystal over at Bag A Day, helped this gifter choose this amazing colour. So I want to say thank you to both of you. You really captured what I love uh, in my colour palette, so thank you so much. The next gift comes from Clara, and she sent me these decadent yarns from Expression Fibre Arts, EFA, for short, I'm just learning the terminology here and acronyms, and I'm blown away. This sent me down a rabbit hole of looking at colour work that I could possibly use this yarn for for hours, and in Ravelry now I have maybe around 12 favourite items that I've got in my like wish lists to make, and I'm going to be using some of this fingering weight yarn in one of those patterns. So I'm yet to decide which one I'm going to to pair with this yarn. We were talking, Clara and I, uh, through the comment section and then occasionally on email. And I guess there was a kit that she was working on and it was not speaking to her. And the yarn is beautiful. And I know that she loves the yarn too, but um, she thought that I would make use of it and put it in a project and I know I will but here it is here some of it's caked up already and some of it is in full hanks and I did have a feel of this as soon as I got the package and I have to say it's wonderfully soft wonderfully wonderfully soft and I don't think that I've received this yarn base from Expression Fiber Arts before or tried it out uh, so this is the first time me feeling it, and I absolutely say it's rating 5 out of 5 for softness. I don't know whether it's the way it's hanked up, or it's been treated or coated, but it's one of the softest yarns that I've ever felt. And this is what the label looks like, Expression Fiber Arts. The yarn itself is called the Amel Fingering Base, and it's 60% baby alpaca, 20% uh, linen and 20% mulberry silk. I'm getting 400 meters or 438 yards in this 100 gram skein and the suggested needle size here is a US 7 or crochet hook size of B BG. Hand wash is the recommended uh, uh, care instructions and I would say lay flat to dry. It's made in Peru and it's wonderfully soft. I think it's the silk factor that is bringing that heathered quality to it because silk sometimes does not hold the dye the same way as uh, wool fiber does. Uh, so you get a, a variation in the color and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So the colorway is called Epitome there. And these are the kind of labels that I love because I can read them. The print is, is sizable enough to read it. And here we have the same uh, fiber, and it's called uh, Enlighten. It's kind of a ecru, like an off-white color, and I think those will go really nicely together in a project. Then I have, I think these might have been at one point together in a hank. Uh, so this is the gray. Are they the same? No, they're different. These might have been minis. So they're different colors. Oh, and the labels have all of the colorways on them in these nice little um, keepsakes here, like the labels. So this color is called Winding Trail. I like that one. And this one here is called Entwine. And this one is called Worth the Climb. Ooh, I think this one might be Vista. And the last one here is See the world. Although that looks a little different. Maybe it's part of what 
the Hank was. Love it, love it, love it. Look at the colors. I'm thinking more of Grecian style pattern work. Or maybe there's some type of, uh, like, more type of pattern. Moorish from the south part of uh, Spain. I think that would work nicely in these colors. But yeah, and two of the larger Hanks here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Clara, for these beautiful gifts. Moving right along, and this train's next stop is to talk about what I've been watching on TV in the evenings and stitching away. So hopefully these recommendations might be something that you could get into as well. I'll leave the part about the events that I've been at and doing in the community with my husband, Chad, for another time because we're running quite long. But let's get stuck into some of these suggestions on what to watch. Smigadoo is a, I believe, a Netflix series on uh, the, Net the Netflix channel. And the first one was all tied in with musicals. So there is singing and dancing and it's all happy musicals. So like Showboat and Seven Wives for Seven Husbands and kind of all that prim and wholesome goodness from times of golden past. So uh, yeah, it's kind of an interesting land that these two wanderers walk into and they're trying to find their way back to normal uh, reality, but they're stuck in these musicals and they sing maybe three songs uh, uh, each of the episodes that are around 40 minutes long. Now in season two, which is my kind of musicals, is the darker side or, you know, the kind of secretive, the mystery and all that sort of uh, those types of musicals. So we've got a combination of Chicago. I've got some notes here. Chorus Line, Cabaret, Sweeney Todd, Hair. Those are the types of musicals that are being introduced. So the same couple has now wandered back into the world after re returning back to their, their usual lives. They've come and slipped back into Schmigadoo, which is now Schmacago, funny enough, because I was in Illinois just recently. But Schmacago is the underbelly side of society's mu musicals uh, that looks into the darker... <laughs> and more kind of drab approach to um, melancholy and sadness and villainous side of the musical characters. So uh, that's definitely one that I could suggest. If you do like to watch some singing and dancing, then that could be one that you could get into. Now, on the flip side of that, there is a movie that I watched that was recommended to me by a friend. You know who you are. And uh, it is um, based on a true story. It stars Daniel Radcliffe and the movie is called Jungle. Now, I'm not sure where this was posted, whether it was a Disney movie or whether it was Prime or Netflix. But I'm sure that each... Um, country has its own carrier that could play jungle and it's about an explorer who goes hiking in the Bolivian wilderness there are a set of uh, a group of people that go hiking they get lost they get separated and it's about Daniel Radcliffe's character who seems to have been um uh, he, he he loses his way and is away from civilization the longest than the others. The others are, are found and they kind of like go out. There's one character that keeps going back and looking for his friend. So it looks at the human struggle, resilience. And at times you think that uh, the human psyche is is so fragile and at other times you think it's so resilient. So it is a combination of both blends within the story of how one person can get through so much, but then also something small uh, that happens could be detrimental as well. Um, so those are my two suggestions to watch on TV if you're ever interested in looking at a show. And with that, I think that catches you up on everything 
I have a second video to do right now, so I'm going to jump in on that and I might actually have some lunch and, you know, do a workout as well and then come back and do that video because I want to separate and feel like I'm accomplishing a few things today. So with that, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.